Hey everybody, it's Keegan here. I'm back with another video for you guys. In today's video, I'm bringing you guys is another edition of Keegan's Movie Reviews. And today, we're going to be talking about two films this time. And today, we're going to be talking about The Exorcist Believer, which is a film that I saw in theaters last night. But before we actually talk about that film, we're going to talk about the original film, The Exorcist. Now, The Exorcist is considered by many to be one of the greatest horror films of all time. And it's one of the most iconic films of all time, too. Even if you haven't seen the film, you have probably have heard of the film. This film was based on the 1971 novel of the same name, which was written by William Peter Blady. And this film was directed by the late William Friedkin, who passed away about two months back. So, uh, rest in peace. And this film was originally released on December 26, 1973. So, this film came out almost 50 years ago. And um, I actually watched this film for the first time about two months back. I actually watched it on the day when William Friedkin passed away. And um, I uh, really, really enjoyed it. And it's definitely an iconic film for a reason. But before we get to more on my thoughts on the film, we're going to talk about the story of the film. Which is a pretty simple story. But yeah, let's take a dive into the story of the film. The story of The Exorcist is a simple one and doesn't really need an introduction. It follows a young girl named Regan, played by uh, Linda Blair, who starts acting strange than usual, only to be possessed by the devil. And her mother, named Chris, played by Ellen Burstyn, is desperate at getting help on trying to get the demon out of her daughter and tries to get several priests to help with the exorcism. And that's basically the story of the film in a nutshell. It's pretty simple and I don't it doesn't really need an introduction. I'm sure you know the story even if you haven't seen it. Now when this movie first came out back in 1973, it stirred up a lot of controversy from a lot of religious organizations, most notably the Catholic Church, as the film uh, centers around religion and uh, possession. And some religious organizations called the film to be banned due to some of the controversy but this was back in the 70s it was banned and I think this was banned in some countries and maybe edited in some but the film was pretty controversial for the time being from religious organizations but today the film is still regarded as one of the greatest horror films of all time and for good reason it's creepy it's eerie and it's a uh, pretty disturbing at times and how they done how the film was made back then was pretty impressive for a film that came out in the early 70s and um it's definitely a creepy film too i wouldn't really call it all that scary i would find it very creepy too especially the words that the demon says like inside of reagan are some pretty messed up stuff that you wouldn't want to hear a young girl saying and I think that part was also some of the controversy this film had back back in the day when it came out. But yeah, I really, really enjoyed it. I don't really have a whole lot to say about it. It's a classic, what can you say? And um, before we actually move on to The Exorcist Believer, I am well aware that there are a number of sequ There are two sequels and two prequels and even a, a short-lived TV series of The Exorcist. Although the prequels I hear were mixed to mostly bad reviews. The second Exorcist movie I know got some really bad reviews and has got like a 3.4 star rating on IMDb I believe. And I hear The Exorcist 3 is the only decent sequel in the series from what I know. But maybe one day I'll check out all the, the prequels and the sequels and maybe even the TV series. The interesting thing about the third one is that the third movie was actually directed by William Peter Blady, who is the author of the novel. And I also haven't read the novel that it was based on, but maybe someday I'll check it out. But uh, overall, I don't really have too much else to say. The Exorcist is a classic film, and it is still one of the greatest horror films ever made 50 years later. And um, if you haven't seen The Exorcist and you like horror movies, definitely check it out. It's a classic. So, uh, yeah, I don't really have anything else to add, so I'm giving The Exorcist an 8.5 out of 10.
Now we move on to The Exorcist Believer, which this film I saw in theaters yesterday, and this film was also released in theaters yesterday. And this film was written and directed by David Gordon Green, who also directed Pineapple Express and all three of the Halloween requels, which were Halloween, Halloween Kills, and Halloween Ends. Which, I haven't seen those three Halloween movies, but I hear mixed to negative things on them. Well, mostly negative things on the uh, Halloween Kills and Halloween Ends. But again, I haven't seen those those three films. And this film is also the first film in a trilogy of requels. Which, for those who don't know what a requel is, it's basically the reboot of a series, but it takes place after the first film. Which, notably, this is... Like, this is... Uh, like the exam the best example I can say of this was the 2018 Halloween movie and the Halloween kills and Halloween ends like I mentioned before those are example of requels which those three films were also directed by David Gordon Green now I want to start off by saying I had very low expectations for this movie I was not expecting this movie to be any good at all the movie looked like shit from the trailer I remember, I remember seeing the first trailer for this movie when it was coming out when I saw Oppenheimer back in August. And it was just too long for a trailer. It did not have to be three minutes long. But it was. And despite not being interested in this movie and having zero expectations to seeing this movie, I still went ahead and saw it. And needless to say... It was pretty mediocre at best, as best I can describe it. I also had a really bad experience of the movie when I saw it in theaters last night, but we'll get to more on that in a little bit. But anyways, let's talk about the story of the film. So, The Exorcist Believer takes place 50 years after the first Exorcist movie ends. Now, like I mentioned before, I haven't seen any of the prequels or sequels, so I'm not sure if there's any of those referenced in this movie. But I doubt it. But I could be wrong though. So I just wanted to point that out again. So anyways. The film centers around two families. With a daughter of each family that go missing for three days straight. The, the daughters that go missing are really are best friends or something. And they go walk in the woods one day after school. And they go missing for three days straight. And when they are found... They are they act abnormal and are not are not and they're completely not themselves. And of course they are both possessed by the devil, the same devil from the first film. And it's basically just two Reagans in this film that are possessed, basically. And then one of the families turns to Chris, played by Ellen Bernston, who is in the first film. They turn to her for help on how to get the demons out of their daughters with the help of some other uh, like of a member of each religion or something specifically catholic the catholic church or something so it's sort of the same as the original except it's two girls possessed by the devil instead of one which i thought was pretty interesting and uh that's basically the story of the film in a nutshell i gotta be honest I actually kind of liked the first half of this movie. Like, the movie started out a bit strong. Like, it started out fine. And I remember thinking, hmm, this isn't so bad. Maybe it might be a decent sequel. Well, unfortunately, after the first half of the film, the film went downhill. It just started to get boring, repetitive, predictable, and just really uninteresting. Now, I wouldn't call this film horrible by any means. Like, it has its moments, but the film itself isn't very good either. But it's not a terrible film by any means. But, but it, it had its moments. Like, it had its, it was creepy at times, and some of the performances were decent, I guess. And I like how they got Ellen Burstyn back. And Linda Blair, who only appears at the very end of the film. Spoiler alert. But, unfortunately, the rest of the film is just just bland. Like, 
I feel like it kind of rehashes some stuff from the original film. And some of the dialogue in this film is bad. Like, probably the, the cringiest one is, like, towards the end of the film. And without spoiling it, one of the characters says, I choose you, redacted, which... The redacted part is just one of the girls who was possessed, which I'm not going to spoil that. But that part just made me cringe. It was like, what the fuck? It was like a Pokemon or something. But overall, the film wasn't terrible, but it wasn't very good either. And I thought it was okay. It was just mediocre at best. That's how I'll say it. But it should be noted that I had a really bad experience seeing this movie in the theater. There were some people that wouldn't stop talking throughout the fucking movie. Like, it was just really pissing me off. Like, there were two people sitting two seats away from me, like on the row where I was sitting, that wouldn't stop talking and occasionally talked a little bit loud than they should. But I don't usually have a problem with people whispering and briefly talking through movies but if you're going to talk through the fucking movie that's going to be a problem and to make matters worse there were a group of shithead teenagers sitting two rows ahead of me who wouldn't stop talking wouldn't stop fucking around with their phone looking at texting or looking at snapchat of all things and they were just being annoying just it was just a fucking nightmare seeing this movie in the theater like, this is, like, this was by far the worst movie theater going experience I've ever had in my life. And I've been going to the movies for almost 20 years, since 2004. Now, I don't have an issue with people who talk briefly at a movie. But if you're going to talk throughout the entire movie, then that's an issue. And if people are texting, like, just sending out a text or something, then that's okay. Just make sure you just put the phone away and just don't look at it all the time. But unfortunately, the teenagers that were sitting two rows ahead of me wouldn't stop looking at their phones, and it was really distracting for me. And I was just really getting mad. Like, I was almost going to walk out of the movie because of this shit I had to deal with, but I chose to just sit there and just deal with it. Because I don't like walking out of movies, even if it's a shitty film. I just get what I paid for. But unfortunately, my experience was ruined because of these assholes that wouldn't stop talking and looking at their phone and just wouldn't just stop fucking around. Like, that type of behavior in a movie theater is totally unacceptable. Like, if you're going to watch a movie, just watch the fucking movie and don't talk or look at your phone or don't do any bullshit like that. Uh, but it wasn't their fault that I thought this movie was mediocre. But I did have a horrible experience at the film, to say the least. Uh, that experience just pissed me off. But aside from my movie theater going experience, this movie was mediocre. I don't really recommend it. And I know there are two more sequels coming out. Even if this movie bombs at the box office, Bloomhouse still plans to release the two sequels that are going to be coming out. I strongly doubt that they'll be any better, though. I can tell you that much. But one thing is certain, the original Exorcist is still one of the greatest horror films ever made 50 years later. And nothing will surpass it, I can tell you that much. But anyways, this movie was a waste of time. I had a terrible experience seeing it in the theater. And I don't really recommend it, but if you do want to check it out, then just knock yourself out, I guess. And also, don't talk during the movie when people are trying to watch the movie. So anyways, I'm giving The Exorcist Believer a 5.5 out of 10. So uh, yeah, that's going to be it for this video, you guys. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you guys enjoyed the video, as always, feel free to leave a like, leave a comment below, subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, share video with your friends, etc. You know the rest. And follow me on my other social medias. The links are in the description down below. And what do you guys think of The Exorcist or The Exorcist Believer? Let me know in the comment section below. And what is the worst movie theater going experience you've ever had? Let me know in the comment section below. But anyways, guys, that's all I got to say for this video. So until next time, this is Keegan Shepard signing off. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys have a great day. And I'll see you guys in the next one. And uh, yeah, take care, everybody. Peace out. Bye-bye.